The Social Science Research Council (SSRC) is a US-based independent nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing research in the social sciences and related disciplines. Established in Manhattan in 1923, it today maintains a headquarters in Brooklyn Heights with a staff of approximately 70, and small regional offices in other parts of the world on an as-needed basis. The SSRC offers several fellowships to young researchers in the social sciences and related disciplines, mostly for overseas fieldwork. History <laughs> Early history The SSRC came into being in 1923 as a result of the initiative of the American Political Science Association's Committee on Research, headed by the association's president, Charles E. Miriam (1874–1953), who was political science chair at the University of Chicago and an early champion of behaviorally oriented social science. Representatives of the American Economic Association, the American Sociological Society, and the American Statistical Association joined with Miriam and his associates in forming the world's first coordinating body of the social sciences. Other national associations—in anthropology, history, and psychology, designated representatives to the new entity, named the Social Science Research Council SSRC, in the year following its incorporation on December 27, 1924. In subsequent years, the membership would expand to include representatives from law, geography, psychiatry, and medicine. To support its work, the SSRC turned not to the U.S. government, whose support seemed more appropriate for the natural sciences, but to private foundations. For the first 50 years, well over three quarters of the SSRC's funding was provided by the Russell Sage Foundation, the Ford Foundation, the Carnegie Corporation, and two Rockefeller Philanthropies, the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Memorial and the Rockefeller Foundation. The SSRC was part of a wider progressive era movement to develop organizations of expertise that could dispense interested knowledge to policymakers. These organizations would tap leading thinkers in various fields to think creatively about how to rid the nation of the social and political ills brought on by the Industrial Revolution. Other independent, non-governmental, policy-minded institutions founded in that era included the American Law Institute 1923, the Brookings Institution 1927, and the Council on Foreign Relations 1921. The Council's main distinguishing feature was its commitment to the advancement of research in the social sciences in the United States. Similar to other progressive era institutions, the SSRC represented a new kind of hybrid one that was in some ways defined more by what it wasn't than what it was. It was not a governmental body, thus was removed from the pressures of Washington and public calls for quick-fix solutions to social problems. It was not an academic association—so was freed from disciplinary boundaries. It was not a university and hence did not have to confront competing demands for services unrelated to research. Along with Miriam, two individuals were especially vital to the SSRC's early success. 
One was Wesley Clare Mitchell 1874 one of the founders of the New School for Social Research and a leading force behind the emergence of the National Bureau of Economic Research in the 1920s. The other was Beardsley Ruml, who had trained in psychometrics at the University of Chicago. RUML was active in the early phases of Rockefeller philanthropies. He poured Rockefeller resources into the social sciences in general and the SSRC in particular. All three men channeled their progressive values into the cause of empirical research and knowledge. In his 2001 History of the SSRC, Kenton Worcester highlighted four aspects of their founding vision that remain central to this day. Interdisciplinarity – The SSRC was constructed as a platform on which scholars from various disciplines and traditions including the natural sciences and humanities could come together in a spirit of problem-solving intellectual cross-fertilization. Intermediary role – The federal government was not prepared to put its weight behind a central funding agency for the social sciences. Thus the SSRC frequently acted as an intermediary between researchers and research-supporting foundations, assuming the functions of assessing research priorities and disbursing research funds. Institutional flexibility – The SSRC was designed to be as elastic as possible, to take advantage of changing social conditions and methods of investigation. Even in its early days, the Council's research planning committees were expected to carry out their work for a limited span of time, and for the same reason fellowship programs were kept going only as long as they were judged to be effective. Scientific advance in the greater interests of society. The SSRC's founders believed that the social sciences should address real world concerns. They wanted to see social science move in a more data sensitive, empirical direction. Starting in the mid 1920s, the Council sponsored annual conferences and launched its research training fellowships program. Committees launched in the 1920s and 1930s included Agriculture 1925 to 42 Crime 1925 to 32 Industrial Relations 1926 to 30 Business Research 1928 to 31 Pressure Groups and Propaganda 1931 to 34 Government Statistics and Information Services 1933 to 37 Social Security 1935 to 45 One of the council's first acts was to urge Congress to appropriate funds sufficient to allow the Library of Congress to publish an annual index of state laws as early as 1923, the SSRC cooperated with the National Research Council in a study of human migration from a social standpoint, said to be the institution's first global endeavor. Franklin D. Roosevelt served as a member of the Council's Advisory Committee on Business Research 1928 after he became president, collaborations between administration officials, the Rockefeller Foundation, council staff, and council networks led to the committee work that accompanied the formulation and implementation of Social Security. During World War II, the council served as a bridge between the Roosevelt administration and the social sciences, working behind the scenes to ensure that qualified social Social scientists were placed with appropriate agencies. 
it joined forces with its humanities counterpart, the American Council of Learned Societies ACLS, and other partners to form the Ethnogeographic Board, with the mission of providing information about unfamiliar societies with which the war was suddenly bringing Americans into contact. The board developed a roster of people with specialized area knowledge and conducted a survey of nascent area studies programs in American universities. <laughs> Post-World War II The identity of the Council in the latter half of the 20th century would closely overlap the development of area studies and the promotion of modernization theory. In the wake of World War II, there was widespread consensus on the need for the United States to invest in international studies. Liberals and conservatives alike viewed the creation of a large brain trust of internationally oriented political scientists and economists as an urgent national priority. There was considerable tension, however, between those who felt strongly that, instead of applying Western models, social scientists should develop culturally and historically contextualized knowledge of various parts of the world by working closely with humanists, and those who thought that social scientists should seek to develop overarching macrohistorical theories that could draw connections between patterns of change and development across different geographies. The former became area studies advocates, the latter proponents of modernization theory. In this context, the post-war SSRC had two separate agendas, which to some extent were at odds with each other because they entailed very different sets of methodological commitments, ideographic versus nomothetic. On the one hand, the SSRC was keen to join forces with the country's major foundations most notably, the Ford Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Carnegie Corporation of New York to promote area studies. For this agenda, it already had a natural institutional partner, the ACLS. Indeed, the two councils had worked during the war mapping out U.S. based foreign studies. On the other hand, the SSRC also wished to promote behavioralist social science an agenda that directly descended from Charles Merriam's pre war concerns. To further its interests in area studies, the SSRC teamed up with the ACLS in administering area research training fellowships with funds from the Carnegie Corporation and in forming the Committee on World Area Research. In the words of SSRC historian Eldridge Sibley, T. His committee served as the primary planning, coordinating and evaluating agency at the national level for the entire foreign area and language movement in the United States. To further its behavioralist agenda, the SSRC set up various other committees including, most notably, the Committee on Political Behavior, organized in 1945 by Pendleton Herring and headed at various times by David Truman, David Easton, and Robert Dahl, all of whom would serve as presidents of the American Political Science Association, and the Committee on Comparative Politics, organized in 1953 and headed by Gabriel Almond and then Lucian Pi, both of whom also became APSA presidents. The SSRC's agenda for the behavioral social sciences largely came apart in the 1970s, leaving area studies as its central platform. 
By then, the SSRC and the ACLS had emerged as the national nexus for raising and administering funds for area studies. They created and managed about a dozen joint committees covering Africa 1960 to 96 China 1981 to 96 Eastern Europe 1971 to 96 Japan 1967 to 96 Korea 1967 to 96 Latin America 1942 to 47 1959 to 96 Muslim societies 1985 to 93 Near and Middle East 1959 to 96 South Asia 1976 to 96 Southeast Asia 1976 to 96 Soviet Union 1983 to 96 successor to Committee on Slavic and East European Studies 1971 to 77 and Slavic and East European Studies Committee 1948 to 71 Western Europe 1975 to 96 the joint SSRC ACLS committees would accomplish most of their work Field development workshops, conferences, and publications with funding from the Ford Foundation. In 1972, Ford conferred to the two councils the responsibility for managing its centerpiece program, the Foreign Area Fellowship Program. For the next 30 years, the SSRC and the ACLS would award approximately 3,000 Area Studies Dissertation Fellowships and, with funds from other foundations as well, another 2,800 postdoctoral Area Studies Research Grants. In Kenton Worcester's words, the cumulative total of awards for field research outside the United States was staggering." Annual reports of the SSRC indicate that the area committees had an impressive record of productivity and influence on area studies and the disciplines they encompassed. In particular, scholars appeared to appreciate the fertile ground the SSRC, ACLS area committees provided for interdisciplinary scholarship. As Korea specialist Bruce Cummings put it, for decades, these committees offered a rare venue where one could see what a historian thought of the work of an economist, or what a literary critic thought of behavioralist sociology. According to Cummings, the SSRC was particularly appreciated as a meeting ground between traditional social science disciplines and area studies. Even when area studies occupied center stage, the SSRC continued to support advanced research on social themes of the day. In the 1970s and 1980s, it convened committees addressing such topics as cognitive research, law and social science, international peace and security, states and social structures, the urban underclass, and urban migration. The Council's forays into non area studies were limited, however, by the challenges of the funding environment. In the immediate post-war period, the SSRC had benefited from unprecedented federal support of social and domestic programs, as well as increased public attention to social science research. But the growing tide of American conservatism, begun in the 1950s, eventually led to a populist backlash against federal funding of social research. By the time President Ronald Reagan assumed office, the political atmosphere had soured over the role of the social sciences and public investment in social research. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Post Cold War. The end of the Cold War and the quickening pace of globalization turned the future of area studies into the number one issue for council management in the concluding years of the 20th century. Under the stewardship of four successive presidents, David Featherman 1989 to 1995, Kenneth Pruitt 1995 to 1098, Orville Gilbert Brim Jr. 1998-1999, and Craig Calhoun 1999 to 2012. The SSRC closed down its area committees in favor of a reorganized international program with thematic, cross-regional, and cross-cultural components. According to this vision, the area studies field would be transformed and integrated into traditional social science disciplines—especially, economics, sociology, and political science. Emphasis would shift from country and area to theme and context sensitivity. The SSRC's records are stored in the Rockefeller Archive Center, North Terrytown, New York. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Past Presidents. Ira Katz Nelson, 2012 to 2017. Craig Calhoun, 1999 to 2012. Orville Gilbert Brim Jr., 1998-99. Kenneth Pruitt, 1995 to 98. David Featherman, 1989 to 95. Frederick Wakeman Jr., 1986 to 89. Francis the Tenth Sutton, acting president, 1985–86. Kenneth Pruitt, 1979–85. Eleanor Sheldon, 1972–79. Ralph W. Tyler, 1971–72. Henry Riken, 1968–71. Edward Pendleton Herring, nineteen forty eight to sixty eight. Topic Fellowships and other awards. Since 1923, the SSRC has funded the research of over ten thousand fellows. Most SSRC fellowships are conducted through annual, peer-reviewed competitions and offer support for predissertation, dissertation, and postdoctoral work. And, although most SSRC fellowships target the social sciences, a number also engage the humanities, the natural sciences, and relevant professional and practitioner communities. The SSRC established the Albert O. Hirschman Prize in 2007 to recognize academic excellence in international, interdisciplinary social science research, theory, and public communication in the tradition of German-born American economist Albert Hirschman. The first two Hirschman Prize recipients are Donnie Roderick, 2007, and Charles Tilley, 2008. The latter received the prize just weeks before his death. Topic: <laughs> Resources. Topic: <laughs> Landmark publications Throughout the decades, SSRC research committees have produced edited volumes that helped to crystallize new fields and invigorate existing ones. Noteworthy titles include Media Piracy in Emerging Economies edited by Joe Karaganis 2011. 
Academically Adrift, by Richard Aram and Josip Araxa 2011. The Power of Religion in the Public Sphere, ed. Eduardo Mendida and Jonathan Van Antwerpen 2011. Privatization of Risk Book Series, ed. Craig Calhoun and Jacob S. Hacker 2008-09. The Measure of America, American Human Development Report 2008-2009, ed. Sarah Bird Sharps, Kristen Lewis, and Eduardo Borges Martins 2008. After September 11 Book Series, 2002-06 Market Cultures, ed. Robert W. Hefner 1998. Social Suffering, ed. Arthur Kleinman, Vina Doss, and Margaret Locke 1997. The Culture of National Security, ed. Peter J. Katzenstein 1996. The Underclass Debate, ed. Michael B. Katz, 1993. Dual City, ed. John H. Mollenkopf and Manuel Castells, 1991. The Politics of Numbers, ed. William Alonso and Paul Starr, 1987. Law and the Social Sciences, ed. Leon Lipsor and Stanton Wheeler 1986. Life Course Dynamics, ed. Glenn H. Elder, Jr. 1985. Bringing the State Back In, ed. Peter B. Evans, Dietrich Ruschemeyer, and Theda Skokpol 1985. Karma, an Anthropological Enquiry, ed. Charles F. Keyes and E. Valentine Daniel 1983. Organizing Interests in Western Europe, ed. Suzanne Berger 1981. The New Authoritarianism in Latin America, ed. David Collier 1979. The Breakdown of Democratic Regimes series, ed. Juan L. Linz and Alfred Stepin, 1978. The Formation of National States in Western Europe, ed. Charles Tilley, 1975. Topic: <laughs> Digital Forums. Since 2001, the SSRC has launched a series of digital forums. Active forums include African Futures, The Imminent Frame, Kujinga Amani, The Democracy Papers, or Reverberations. Topic: Notable Fellows and Committee Members. Pioneering American political scientist Gabriel Allman 1911 to 2002 held awards from the SSRC in 1935-1936 and again in 1946-1947. While serving on an SSRC committee, he accomplished critical work in the development of comparative politics as a field. Nobel Peace Prize winner Ralph J. Bunch (1903–1971) held an SSRC research training fellowship in 1936–1938. Presidential biographer James McGregor Burns born 1918, has held two SSRC awards, a Demobilization Award in 1946–1947, and a Research Training Award in 1949. 
Historian John Hope Franklin (1915–2009) was a recipient of an SSRC fellowship in the early part of his career. From 1956 to 1961, he served on the SSRC's long-running grants in aid committee. Canadian-American economist John Kenneth Galbraith (1908–2006) had a research training fellowship in 1937–1938. Historian Peter Gay born 1923, was a research training fellow in 1950–1951. Morris Janowitz, 1919–1988, a prominent sociologist at the University of Chicago who specialized in the sociology of the military, received a Demobilization Award, 1946–1947. Simon Kuznets a Nobel laureate in economics, led the SSRC Committee on Economic Growth from 1949 to 1968. His long involvement with the SSRC began in 1925, when he was a research fellow studying economic patterns in prices. In 1961, Kuznets headed a new SSRC Committee on the Economy of China. Harold D. Laswell (1902–1978) was among the earliest SSRC research fellows (1928–1929). He went on to become a prominent political scientist and president of ASPA. Owen Lattimore (1900–1089), a prominent anthropologist of China and Central Asia, especially Mongolia, held a research fellowship in 1929–1930. Political sociologist Seymour Martin Lipset (1922–2006) held a field fellowship in 1945–1946. One of the results was his award-winning book *Political Man* (1960), which remains thought-provoking to this day. World-renowned cultural anthropologist Margaret Mead (1901–1978) held a research fellowship in 1928–1929. Economist and Nobel laureate Douglas C. North, born 1920, best known for his work on new institutional economics, was an economic history fellow (1949–50). Former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice born 1954 is a former SSRC board member. Economist W. W. Rostow (1916–2003), best known for his work on the stages of economic growth, was a Field Fellow in 1939–1940. Former Secretary of State George P. Schultz born 1920 was a research training fellow in 1947–1948. Marxist economist Paul Sweezy (1910–2004), best known for his work Monopoly Capital, received a Demobilization Award in 1945–1946. Economist and Nobel laureate James Tobin (1918–2002) was a research training fellow in 1946–1947. Albert Wolstetter (1913–97), the architect of U.S. nuclear security policy, was a Field Fellow (1940–1941). Historian and president of the Southern Historical Association, Francis Butler Simpkins (1897–1866) held a research fellowship.
Topic: Assets. As of 2016 the Social Science Research Council had assets of $50.0 million. <laughs> <laughs> Funding details <laughs>